Hello. In this video, we're going to do another virus scan program. In the previous video, we were able to scan for virus signatures, and so we concluded that if we could find this line anywhere in a script, we would assume that our virus was infected. If you haven't seen the previous videos, this is a video that simulates a virus infection just using Python scripts. So go back if you haven't seen the, how the virus works. So the first check that we did was for signatures. In this video, we're going to use what's called heuristic scanning, which will check the file size, we'll check the date, and see if there's been any changes since the file was created. So let's get started with our new scanning program. So I'm going to insert some code down here after the first function, and we'll insert here called a new definition or a new function. Okay, so the comments on my program are to get the initial file size and the date of the program. And then I want to save them all to a text file for use on a later scan. So let's go ahead and collect all of the uh, py files that are in the directory, and we'll save it in a list called programs. Then I'm going to make a list of data of each program. So we're going to call it program list. Each line will contain three items. It'll have the file name, it'll have the file size, and the file date modified. So we'll go through and make those uh, collections right now. So each P in programs is our for loop. So the first thing we already have is the program name. That's stored in the variable P. However, we want to grab the program size and the program modified. And I did a little research to find out how Python does that. With Google searching, you're able to find out that there is a, there's a, there's a library called OS. And you can simply choose the word path dot get size and then the file name. Now to be able to use OS properly we have to import it so let's go to the top of our imports again and I'll add OS to my list of imports. So now I can use OS path get size and I know how many bytes this file size is. So also in the OS library there is a method that we can use that'll get the modified time. So OS dot path dot get m time with the variable called p inside. So size will be an integer, I believe, that tells me how many bytes this file is. Also, the modified will give me a number. The number of seconds that has elapsed since the beginning of the Unix epoch, which I think was the January 1st of 1970. So you're just going to get a large integer with millions of seconds since that time. However, every second since then is a unique number, so it works for a timestamp. So I want to save three items into a list. The list is called program data, and so it's the file name, the file size, and the date that it was modified. Now I'm constructing a list called program list, and so I want to simply append this list of program data. So this will be a list of lists. Now when I'm finished, I'm just going to return the program list. So this is a helper function. It will be used by other functions to be able to collect a list of data on all the files. So now I'm going to actually put this function to use. I'm going to use it as a helper function to a new function. So the new function is going to be called write file data and its purpose is to do an initial scan and save the results to a text file. So I'm going to call get file data and then pass it in as a parameter to another function. Well, let's make the other function now. So the function obviously is have to, has to be named this. It's called write file data. And the uh, list that it's expecting is a list of programs. So the data that this, this uh, function generates will be passed in, and then we'll save it to a file. So we'll use the with statement. So with, or while the uh, file is being opened, we will uh, specify the file name here and then create the uh, w tag, which means it's going to be opened with a write access. So I'm going to introduce another library. So I did some research, and there is a library called CSV can find it online if you Google it. And it is a writer that will take a text file and print it with a CSV styling. So let's do an import up here with CSV. And then I'll show you how it works. So down here we have a new object. And it's going to be set to be equal to a something I'll call WR, which is writer. OK, so WR is a new writer, and it will be writing to this file. Now, it's as simple as doing this as saying, wr.writeRows, and then we'll tell it to use the programs that have been passed in through the uh, parameter. Okay, so let's see if this thing works. I'm going to save it, and I'm going to run the program now. 
So it's uh, giving us output from check for virus signatures. That was this function down here. This one here actually didn't have any print statements, so we don't see anything on the screen. What do we have though? We have a new file called filedata.txt. That's the file name that I chose here. And let's see what it wrote. Let's see, we need to bring up the size. So now you can see the results of our file. We have uh, four different file names. We have the second column, which is the number of bytes. And then the last item is the number of seconds that gives us the timestamp for this file. Let's check to see if this is accurate. I'm going to go back and look at the details of my program and check to see what it says on the other items. So for uh, file size, hello.py is 21 bytes, and we have a 21 listed here. The other ones are listed as hello again is 2 kilobytes, which is rounded off, obviously. This is 1,674 bytes. And then the virus scan itself is, a, is also listed. So we have ourselves an initial scan for our file. Now there's one other issue here that I'd like to correct, is that uh, every time we run our virus scan, this will create a new copy of our text file. So this will be overwritten. So I'd like to check to see if this already has been done. The initial scan only needs to be done once. So let's put in some new text here in the uh, statement right before the uh, open file for writing. So I want to check to see if this pathway exists, if this file exists. If it does, then we will just do a return statement. So return will exit the function and it won't do anything more. However, that's uh, kind of like an else statement now. So if the else part comes, then it'll continue to write. So let's check to see if this works. So right now I have data that tells me that uh, hello 21 is the uh, first line of data. So you can see it's 21 bytes. Well, let's go in and modify hello and put in some more stuff. So I'm going to put in a few more bytes in the center and save the changes. So now what are the bytes? It says 34 bytes. If we run the program again and uh, it uh, checks to see if everything's good, let's see what happens now. So if I say we have 34 bytes and we have uh, originally 21 still printed, so it did not overwrite the original text file. Let's throw away the text file and run the program again to see if it recreates it for us. And it should. Okay, we'll close here. And the text file now says that hello is 34 bytes long. So that matches here. Okay, so it appears that this only works the first time we uh, run the program. After that, it won't create this text file twice. Okay, so now we have this text file created. It's time to use it to check to see if any changes have been made since the initial scan. And that's what we'll do next. All right, it's time to make a new function. I'm going to call it check for changes. And then I will print out a message to the terminal so we can see what's going on here. It'll tell us we're checking for heuristic changes. And then once again, at the end of the function, I'm going to tell it I'm finished checking for changes. So here's the strategy. I want to open up the text file that we created in the first scan and now compare each line in that file to the current size and date of the files that are in the directory. And if we find a change, then we know we've probably been infected by a virus. So a way to get all the lines out of a text file like this is to use a uh, file reader again. And we will take a function called file.read and we'll use split lines. So this will cut up all the lines into individual items in a list. All right, so the next part's a little tricky. We need to convert a list of text items into an actual list. So I want to um, take the original file list and make it a, uh, you know, just an empty set. And then for each item in the file list, we're going to split them. So each, each line will be split by a comma delimiter. And then so the items will be the name, the file size, and the uh, date. So the original file list of the files in the original scan, we'll call it, is going to be stored in this, uh, this array here. Okay, so the next goal is we have to go get the current data from the directory as it is now, and then we can compare the two lists. So I want to get a current file list. Where am I gonna get that from? Well, fortunately, we created the function up here called get file data. So I can simply just call this function down in this other place right here. So this will return a list of what currently exists in our directory. 
So the goal now is to compare the old items against the current items and see if there are any differences between the two. So we're going to have to use a double for loop again. I want to go through each file in the current list and to see if it exists in the original lists. And so it's like a, a four inside a four. So now we can check to see if item zero in each list is the same. So if the current zero is equal to the original zero, then we know that the file names match. If the file names match, then we can go on and check to see if the other items match. So the first check we're going to see is if the uh, file sizes match. Remember the item in the second column is the file size, and we want to double check to see if one is equal to the other. Now I believe that we have a problem that in one file format the, uh, the file size was saved as a string and the other one was saved as an integer. So I'm just going to make sure that I'm comparing strings to strings. So string of one compared to the string of the other. So while I'm doing the if statement, I'm also going to check to see if the other items do not match. So you might recall that the uh, second item, or I guess this would be item three in the list, is the, st is the stamp of the uh, date. So we'll also check to see if these uh, strings are equal to each other. So in my comments, I will also update to say file sizes or dates do not match. So I'm going to print out a big alert that says, uh, alert, file mismatch. And I'm going to use a new line character so we can skip a few spaces. So since there is a mismatch, let's just print out the original list of what the current status is compared to the original status. So we'll print a uh, string of C and a string of O. Okay, the last step is to say if, we, uh, if everything matches, there's no problems, then we'll just say file um, appears to be unchanged. Okay, so the last thing we have to do is actually call this function. So down here after check for signatures, we're going to call this new function, which is called check for changes. So I'll call that down at the last. Okay, let's save it and run it and see if we have any issues with our file sizes. Okay, I have a syntax error. Let's see what's going on up here on this line here. Oops, I put the parentheses in the wrong spot. So let's try that one there. So now we have open with the file name here. Okay, let's save that and try again. Let's see if there's any more errors. I certainly have the errors. Okay, so what did I do here? So I forgot my colon at the end of the if statement. So we'll put that in and run it again. Now what? Down here at the bottom, I put in an extra colon. So you're seeing lots of syntax errors and eventually this thing should run. Okay, here we go. So the uh, check for heuristics section is now being printed. It says here, hello appears to be unchanged. Hello again is unchanged, Python virus. And it thinks that virus scan has been modified some way, be some way because uh, uh, we've been updating it. So it grew in size. The current value is bigger than the original. So is this infected as a virus? Well, no, this has been just modified by the user. So it's, it's clean. In, uh, in the case of if we were to infect our programs, then we should see a new change. So I'd like to take out this virus scan out of the folder. So virus scan we're going to leave outside on the desktop for now. And then let's go run the Python virus again. And let's see if we can infect everybody. So we'll run and run the module. Okay, so now we've infected all the other files in here. Let's take a look here. And we should see that hello now has a bunch of code and so does hello again. All right, so let's bring in virus scan back into our desktop area and we'll run it. And what do we get for a report? we should see a new item. So now the signatures say that hello has been affected, hello again, and Python virus, they're all infected. However, virus scan appears to be clean. That's good, it wasn't in the folder where it could get infected. And now the heuristics run, it says file mismatch. So it looks like hello was infected. You can see the difference in file size. This is 1672, and originally it was only 34 bytes. And so that is a file heuristics. Very simple, it just checks to see if any changes were made. Now the key point here is that in most programming tools, like if you're making a C-sharp program and building a Windows app, the executable file is compiled and it should never change its file size or file date. And so if one of those items does change, then a virus scanning software such as Symantec would be able to check that 
and not even know which virus it was that infected it. But it just knows that it changed its size. And so this is a second uh, example of how a virus scan system would work. So in summary, we've created a virus program that will infect other files. Then we created a uh, check for signatures program to check to see if a specific virus has been found. And then we chose this last item, which is uh, heuristics to check for changes in our files. And so those are ways that you can understand how real viruses are built and how they are detected.